And this mechanical energy balance is just a subset from the overall energy balance. All right? Is this clear? Yes. Then, on the other hand, on the other hand, when you calculate or try to do energy balance in the system that has temperature change, once again from thermodynamics, mostly we can assume that as long as you have temperature change in your system, if T is not constant, or I should say, if T is not constant, you can assume that delta U is much, much greater than delta EK and delta EP. So whenever you have temperature change or whenever you have phase change, the internal energy change in the system is much higher than kinetic energy change and potential energy change. And therefore, we usually drop this term. Okay? So when you drop it, the term energy balance here, you consider only internal energy plus some kind of flow work. The internal energy plus flow work, you get enthalpy. Okay? Enthalpy in minus enthalpy out equal to or plus heat plus work equal to the change in um, energy inside. And once again, if you say that internal energy is much, much higher than kinetic and potential energy, sometimes we just drop them, look into the internal energy, internal energy of the system only. This kind of equation, you use it very often in thermodynamics, whenever you have temperature change, right? Once again, this part is only subset of the overall energy balance, depending on what kind of assumption. You have three forms of energy. You can divide it into two parts, mechanical part and somehow thermal part. If your system is isothermal, you just drop the thermal part, look into the mechanical work or mechanical energy, you get Bernoulli equation. If you think thermal part is more important, you drop this mechanical part, you end up here. All right? Now, If I use this equation added by this equation, you should get this one back, right? Okay. All right, I'd like to start with equation of motion, okay? Keep that aside, keep that in mind. Start here. If you look into the meanings of equation of motion, this term is, you know, the rho v is momentum, okay? So you 
look into the change of momentum with respect to time. All right. So you can say that this term is rate of increase in momentum per unit volume of your system. Okay? Then you have this term. Just a review. This term is convection term for momentum transport. So it means that this one is net rate of addition of momentum into your system by means of convection. These two terms correspond to net rate of addition of momentum to the system by means of molecular transport, right? And then this is external force or how to increase the momentum in your system by means of external force. So that's the momentum balance, okay? Now, let's start here. If I take the first term on the left, this is vector. If I dot it with velocity, what should I get? If you write it down here, this is dot product of two vectors. Vector V can be written as Vx Vy, Vz, okay? Dotted with this part would be d rho by dt Vx, d rho by dt Vy, and d rho by dt Vz, okay? You dot these two vectors together, you get Vx d rho by dt Vx plus y component and z component. Okay? Now, if I set this aside, start by another term, v square. v square that we write down in kinetic energy, normally 1 over 2 rho v square, is essentially vx square plus vy square plus vz square, right? So if you look into the change in kinetic energy with respect to time, this is kinetic energy change with respect to time. You just take this term multiplied by 1 over 2 rho all over the place and then differentiate it with respect to time, okay? You get d by dt of 1 over 2 rho vx square plus rho vy square plus rho vz square. Again, if you look into this term, or
I can take one over two out, right? I can take row out, out from the differentiation. So what you have left would be differentiate of vx squared by dt, okay? If you take differentiation, you get 2vx dvx by dt, right? Okay? So that 2 and 2 would go out. You have vx d rho vx by dt. I can take rho in here if you assume rho is equal to constant. Just simple, straight, a, a simple case first. If rho is constant, you can take rho out. You get vx d rho vx by dt. Okay? So this term, the first term would be vx d rho vx by dt. Then you have vy and vz. All right? If you look from this equation to that equation, they're the same. Is it? If you compare this term and that term, they're essentially the same. So that means when you dot the, the term here, the change in momentum with respect to time, you dot it with velocity, essentially you get the change in kinetic energy in your system. Okay? Now, starting back from equation of motion, if you dot it, by V, all over the place. The first term here, we already proved that when you dot it, you get D by DT of 1 over 2 rho V squared. Okay? The rest, I'm not going to show you, I just give you a result. So when you dot the first term with V, you get this part. The second term, when you dot it with V, you get two terms, okay? The third term, when you dot it with V, you get two terms. And then the last term, you get one term. In this equation, the only thing that you are not familiar with is this double dot. What in the world is that? Just think like this. When you have vector dot another vector, 